Hey guys, it's Sharon and welcome back to System Design Concepts for Beginners. In this video, I want to talk about how to do capacity estimations in a system design interview. Most system design interviews, especially with big companies, will have a section of the interview that is dedicated to capacity estimations. Usually right after you're done asking some clarifying questions about the requirements of the system, you'll be expected to estimate some numbers that in theory should guide your design. I say in theory because normally in this type of interview, those numbers wouldn't really affect your design. I mean, you'll be designing a large scale system, larger and larger look pretty similar in terms of architecture. A lot of the times you'll be doing these estimations and move on with the interview without ever using them for anything. So you might be asking yourself, why am I even doing this? Well, the annoying answer is that it's simply expected of you. Over time, big tech companies kind of adopted this structure for system design interviews and capacity estimations is just a part of this structure. In real life though, those estimations are actually very important. They're meant to help you determine the amount of resources you'll need for the system to function at a high level. Things like number of servers, number of data partitions, amount of memory for cache, and so on. Some interviewers might ask you about those resources, and others will not. Either way, those estimations do serve a purpose, even if you don't end up using them. Estimating these type of figures using just a few assumptions, a bit of common sense, and an organized way of thinking shows a lot about the way you approach problems. And in my opinion, this is the real reason why you should do them in an interview. In this video, I'm going to show you which numbers you need to estimate, how to estimate them, and how to do it quickly. You don't want to spend more than five minutes on this. And everything in this video is of course a suggestion. There are a million different ways to go about this, but I find that this one works for me. I like order, I like steps, I like to know exactly what to do next. So if you like that too, let's get straight into it. The estimations that are important for large scale system design are traffic, storage, bandwidth, and memory for caching. In this video, we're going to do all of them, but in my opinion, doing traffic and storage is more than enough in an interview. Of course, if you feel comfortable and can do all of them really quickly, then go right ahead and do that. But again, don't spend more than five minutes on this. So let's start with traffic estimation. The only number that we need as an input for this is the number of users that our service is expected to support, or better yet, the number of daily active users. This is something that we should ask the interviewer as a clarifying question at the start of the interview. We should simply ask how many daily active users is our service expected to support? And say that this number is 10 million. First thing we have to do is convert users to requests. Because our resources, our servers, our databases, they don't actually care about the concept of users, right? They care about the number of requests they would have to serve. A single active user can generate multiple interactions with the service, right? It can generate multiple API calls, read and write requests that our service will have to handle in reasonable time. So at this point, we need to consider how a typical user will use the service. How many write requests would it generate per day and how many read requests? For example, let's say we're designing a pastebin type service where users can upload a chunk of text and get back a shareable link. The shareable link can later be used to view the paste. Uploading a paste would be a write request and viewing the paste would be a read request. We have 10 million daily active users. That's our starting point. I can make the assumption that only 10% of those users actually upload new pastes. And when they do, they will probably upload on average one paste that day. So we have 1 million write requests per day. Next, we need to determine if the service is going to be read heavy or write heavy. In general, most services will be read heavy as opposed to write heavy because users tend to consume data much more than produce it. For example, if you're using YouTube, you're probably going to watch many more videos than upload new ones. On the opposite side, you have services that are more write heavy. Some examples are services that do analytics, monitoring, and logging. In those cases, you'll be writing data far more often than reading it. But in our case, our service is going to be read heavy because we expect users to view pastes more often than upload them. And once we've established that, we can choose a read to write ratio that makes sense to us. 10 to one, 50 to one, 100 to one, each of these will be fine. So let's say we choose 50 to one. It means that each day we'll be dealing with 50 read requests for each one of the 1 million write requests. So we'll have 50 million read requests per day. Next, we want to get this number down from per day to per second, because we rarely measure performance or bottlenecks at the scale of a day. We need to get them in seconds. So that's the second step in traffic estimation. To get the number of write requests per second, we have to divide this number by the number of seconds there are in a day. There are 60 seconds in a minute, 
60 minutes in an hour and 24 hours in a day. 60 multiplied by 60 is 3600 and now this, this is too much for me. I mean, I can't just do this in my head in two seconds and no one wants to see you do long multiplication or division in a system design interview. So what you should do is always round your number to a convenient power of 10. Don't calculate this, calculate this. This is way more manageable and it's easier to just see that it's 80K without thinking too much. And now in order to make this division easier, we will round it up again to 100K. This point is key with capacity estimations. I cannot stress this enough. Approximate aggressively. It will make your life so much easier. So we have approximately 100K seconds in a day, which means that the average number of write requests per second is 1 million divided by 100K, which is 10. And reads are 50 times the number, so that's 500 read requests per second. And that is all we need for traffic. Let's move on to storage. We need to estimate how much data we'll have to store at any given moment. Remember, we don't have to be super accurate with this. We only want to give a ballpark estimation, so we don't need to calculate the required storage for every table we plan to keep in our database. What we should do is first determine what kind of data artifacts we'll have to store, and then focus on the one that will require the largest amount of disk space. For example, for our pastebin service, we will need to store the paste that our users upload, and we will also need to store the URLs that we generate and send back to the users, right? Now, we can say that the storage that we'll need for the URLs will for sure be negligible compared to what we'll need for the paste because we need one URL per paste and the size of the URL is significantly smaller than the size of the paste. So it would be reasonable to focus only on the storage for the paste. So how much storage will we need to store our user's paste? We can say that because users usually use paste services to share code snippets, logs, and stuff like that, an average paste size will not be too large. It might contain around 200 lines of text. We can estimate that each line contains about 10 words, and each word has five letters or characters. And of course, each character consumes one byte of storage, which means that the average page size will be 10,000 bytes, which is 10 kilobytes. We have 1 million write requests per day. This means we'll get 1 million multiplied by 10 kilobytes of new data per day. Now, for me, it's not obvious just by looking at this how much this is, right? So I wanna take a small detour here and show you how I would calculate this. In a system design interview, one byte is the smallest unit. Then you have a kilobyte, which is a thousand bytes. The number thousand has three zeros, so it's 10 to the power of three. By the way, in base two, a kilobyte is actually two to the power of 10, which is 1024 bytes, but we can stick with decimal for our purpose. It's easier to calculate and it's good enough. Next, we have a megabyte, which is a million bytes. That's three more zeros, which is 10 to the power of six then a gigabyte, which is a billion bytes, 10 to the power of nine. Then we have a terabyte, which is a trillion bytes. We add three more zeros to get 10 to the power of 12. And finally, a petabyte, which is quadrillion bytes, and that's another three zeros, so 10 to the power of 15. Now, if we're trying to calculate one million requests multiplied by 10 kilobytes, then we just replace these letters with powers of 10. A million is 10 to the power of six, and a kilo is 10 to the power of three. For multiplication, we just add those powers. So we get 10 multiplied by 10 to the power of nine, which is 10 gigabytes. So I recommend you just remember those conversions and then it's easy to just add the number of zeros for multiplication or subtract them for division. Okay, let's get back to our problem. We now know that we have to store 10 gigabytes of new data per day, but what about the new data from yesterday and the day before and the day before that? We don't start fresh every morning, right? So we have to consider the retention period of our data. We can ask the interviewer if our pastes come with an expiration date. If pastes expire after five years, then at any given moment, we will have to store all the pastes generated in the five years prior to that moment. In the case where there is no expiration date, like Facebook posts, for example, you know, when you upload a post to Facebook, you expect this post will exist forever, right? So in this case, it will probably be enough to calculate the storage for a period of 10 years. But let's say our pastes do have an expiration time of five years. There are 365 days in a year. Let's round it up to 400. And each day we add 10 gigabytes of new data. Five multiplied by 400 is 2K. This is 20. K has three zeros, giga has 
9, so we have 12 zeros and that is 20 terabytes. Which means that in order to store 5 years of new pace, we will need 20 terabytes. Now we're probably going to want to replicate our data for backup and to improve availability and performance. It's common to replicate the data 3 to 5 times. Let's say we do 3. So in total, we're going to need 60 terabytes. And that's all we need for storage estimation. If you decide to also do bandwidth, this is how it will go. Bandwidth is the amount of data transferred per second. We need to compute the amount of incoming data per second, that's the data coming in from write requests, and the amount of outgoing data per second, which is the data that our service returns as a reply to read requests. We have 10 write requests per second. The size of each write request is equal to the size of the paste that is being uploaded, which we estimated at 10 kilobytes. So we will need to support 100 kilobytes of incoming data per second. Similarly, we have 500 read requests per second. Each read request, which is a request to view a paste, will be served with 10 kilobytes, the average size of the paste. So we will need to support 5 megabytes of outgoing data per second. Lastly, let's do memory for cache. Caching is a way to serve read requests faster by keeping common responses closer for fast retrieval. It's common to use the 80-20 rule for caching. It means that we assume that 20% of the pace will be so popular that they will generate 80% of the traffic. So we would like to cache those popular 20%. We have 50 million daily read requests, each served with a 10 kilobyte paste. We'd like to cache 20% of these. 20% of 10 kilobyte is 2 kilobyte. So we have 50 million multiplied by 2 kilobytes. 50 multiplied by 2 is 100, a million has 6 zeros, kilo has 3, so 9 zeros, which is a gigabyte. So we will need 100 gigabyte for caching. And actually, we will need less than that because we probably counted duplicate requests here. Some of these will be requesting to view the same paste, and in practice, we will only store it once. So actual memory usage will be less than 100 gigabytes. Now I want to do an example of how you would use these numbers for resource decisions. For example, you might be asked how many application servers are required to handle this load. The formula for this is the number of requests per second that we need to support. We just estimated that this number is around 500, divided by the number of requests per second that a single server can handle. This number will obviously vary drastically depending on the server's hardware and the time it takes to process a single request. It's also important to determine whether the request is CPU bound, memory bound, or I.O. bound. But at a very, very high level, if the request is CPU bound, then the formula for this number will be the number of physical cores our servers have divided by the number of time it takes to process a single request. So if we use servers with eight cores, and the time it takes to process one request is half a second, then a single server will be able to handle 16 requests per second. The logic behind this is that on a single physical core where there is no parallel work, we'll be able to process two requests per second, right? Because one request takes half a second, we'll be able to fit two of them in one second. So a single core can take two requests per second, and we have eight of these doing that in parallel. So we'll be able to take eight times this number. That is why we get 16. So this number is 16. Then the number of servers we'll need will be 500 divided by 16. So we can say that we'll need 30 to 50 servers to handle this load. The last thing I want to cover in this video is some common sizes and estimations that might be relevant for other examples. We'll do language and media. Estimations that have to do with language are useful for estimating text and document sizes and also index sizes for search. It will be helpful to remember these approximations. There are 500k words in the English language. A line of text contains 10 words. An English word contains 5 characters, which is 5 bytes. Media related numbers are for images and videos. An HD image that might be used in an Instagram or Facebook post will be around 3 megabytes. The size of an image is determined by the number of pixels it has multiplied by the size of each pixel. The size of the pixel is also called the bit depth of the image. An HD image has 1280 over 720 pixels, and a common bit depth is 24 bits, which is 3 bytes. If we do a bit of rounding, we'll get 1K multiplied by 1K multiplied by 3 bytes, which is 3 megabytes. 
Profile images will be smaller, around 300 over 300 pixels, so the size will be 300 kilobytes. Videos are a bit more complicated because the size depends on frame size, frame rate, compression ratio, and of course duration. But as a rough estimate, we can say that one minute of HD video is around 50 megabytes. The frame size of an HD video is the same as an HD image, so 3 megabytes. Assuming our video has a frame rate of 30 frames per second, we'll get 90 megabytes per second. We can use lossy compression with a compression ratio of 100 to 1, and to get the number per minute, we'll multiply it by 60. So we get this formula, and if we simplify this a bit, we will get 54 megabytes, so we can say it's 50 megabytes. Now, usually we would like to store the same video with lower resolutions as well. If you're designing YouTube, for example, you'll also need 480p, 360p, 240p, and 144p. We can estimate that the sum of these sizes for these lower resolutions is actually equal to the size of the original HD video. Because if the size of 720p is X, the size of this one would be X divided by 2, and for this one X divided by 4, and so on the sum of this series is x. So in total, we will need 2x megabytes, which is 2 multiplied by 50 megabytes. That's 100 megabytes to store all these different formats. So that is it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.